Bush's Bean Factory is one of the many attractions that show up for things to try and do when visiting the Smoky Mountains. But is it worth your time? Today's video will take a closer look at this attraction and leave that decision to you. Welcome to Bear Facts, where we explore the Smoky Mountains one bear fact at a time. If you're looking at this video, chances are that you like factory tours and behind the scenes glimpses. I definitely fall into that category. If I can find the behind the scenes tour, I'm going to go there. So when I learned of Bush's Beans Factory in the Smoky Mountains, I was excited about the prospect of going to see this iconic American bean factory in person. Bush's Beans are a factory that has done well with advertising and promoting their products. The first ads with Jay Bush and his loyal dog Duke came out in the 1990s during a time when people were still force-fed commercials if they wanted to watch local television channels. You couldn't pay for ad-free television and the only way to avoid the ads was to record everything on a VCR and even then you had to watch the ads to get past them. Even to this day, ad campaigns that actually had catchy logos were the ones that were successful. And the creators of these commercials were very effective. They made a highly unmemorable product extremely memorable with their story and humor. The real irony is that our family never even ate Bush's beans growing up, but I could have told you all about their secret recipes and Duke the dog. That's how effective they were. But even though I have a great fondness for tours and Bush was a very memorable company that seemed to have captivated my interest, you might be surprised to know that it took us almost three years to visit them from the time we learned about the factory to the time we finally went for the first time. And here's why. We actually had the goal of visiting the factory as soon as they reopened after COVID's closings. And because we passed Bush's many, many times on our travels between our place and Pigeon Forge, we actually had the opportunity many, many times to stop. But due to COVID and their limited time of operations, it took us two more years of driving by the factory before we finally went. Bush's beans aren't actually in the Smoky Mountains, but rather outside their ranges. You can get there by taking 411 from Pigeon Forge. The factory is in Dandridge, Tennessee, a 31 minute drive from Pigeon Forge and 40 to 60 from Gatlinburg. Though the distance isn't all that far, the traffic is what will make it longer. Unfortunately, as most attractions in the Smokies, there isn't any public transportation that will get you there. You can book a tour or get a lift or drive yourself, but you will need to find transportation on your own. The museum is completely free, there is no cost to park, and they have a great restaurant attached to the museum. These are their great selling points for visitors to make this long drive. The grounds are well manicured and they take pride in their presentation, and there's a lot of parking spaces. The facility is completely handicapped accessible, which makes the museum and diner an ideal location for everyone and anyone to enjoy without worrying about accessibility. And did I mention it's free? Yep, if all you want to do is walk around and look in the museum, it will cost you nothing but gas and time. So is it worth the gas and time to visit? Let's go back to the comment I made earlier when I said it took us three years of driving past bushes before finally taking the time to stop and actually visit them. And I'll explain that statement now. The first hurdle that we encountered was that they didn't actually reopen right away after the COVID closings. And this was about the first time we had actually started visiting the Smoky Mountains. Our first time in the Smokies was during the summer of 2020, during the height of the closures, and this location didn't reopen until the summer of 2022. Another issue that prevented us from going to Bushes was their hours of operations. Their hours of operations are somewhat limited, which are 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and they're closed most holidays. The restaurant is only open from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. For many people, this really doesn't affect them, but because we don't live in the Smokies and can only visit for long weekends and holidays, this was a mild issue. If we wanted to hit the mountains for a hike, then we wouldn't be able to make it back to bushes before they closed. But the truth of the matter is that was we still could have made it. What really prevented us from taking the time and energy to go was that Bushes doesn't actually offer a real tour. 
I wanted to see the inside of the factory and really see the inner workings of the factory. So the fact that we wouldn't get to see this was a bitter pill and also a deterrent. But I don't want to make you think that Bushes isn't worth a trip at all. In fact, you can make it worth your time if you make it a lunch trip. The Bushes Bean Cafe is a very good ratings and people genuinely enjoy the food. Though they will have mostly diner foods, their quality and consistency is worth the time and money to give it a try. They have a wide selection of dishes from ice cream sundaes to fried chicken. The pecan pie is a fan favorite and of course Bushes Beans are included with your entree. The reviews are very positive and people genuinely enjoy going for the food. Though with any restaurant in the Smokies, expect long waits on weekends and peak season times. If you're going to head there for lunch and then the museum, the trip to Dandridge could be worth your time. The museum itself is very nice, well planned out and interactive enough to entertain youngsters for a few minutes. Though colorful and visually stimulating, the museum wouldn't hold the attention of very young people or bored teenagers for very long. There are interactive components with screens and cute games that kids can play, but the goal of the museum is to teach about the history of the factory and give you a tour of how the beans are farmed, processed, and distributed. It's really more for older audiences and people who are willing to stop and read the displays along the way. When you arrive at the factory, you can see the actual plant on the other side of the road. The giant bean can shaped icon is like a beacon in the distance, advertising the business and their crowning achievement, the canned beans. You will also see the Bushes family farmhouse sitting on the road adjacent to the factory. The entrance to the museum and shop are on the back side of the building. Though you can get to the museum through the restaurant, most people don't go this way. There are some fun photo ops as you walk around the building. And I'll give them an A for effort. The design and layer are really nice. The museum is actually to the right when you actually enter the building, but it's hard to pass by the walls and shelves of antiques you see when you first enter the gift shop slash museum. These items are on display are things that were found in the attic of the Bushes family home, the white farmhouse you see across the factory. These antiques set the tone for the beginning of the actual museum putting you in the era and time period that the family started their business. Once you step into the museum, you're given a glimpse of the family and the times that Bushes was established. Like most successful American companies, politics and economics played a huge role in their success. Automation and factories were also picking up speed and the two largest wars the world had ever seen also shaped this family business but the need for food sources that could be stored and shipped was their biggest factor in their success. And to this day, it's the true reason they continue to be successful. Oh, and of course their secret recipe, of course. As you walk up and through the factory museum, they give you an overview of the times and events that shape the history of the company. There are many large visuals, audio commentaries, and chances to learn more about the company history. I admit to looking with fondness at the commercials and the old television sets that were on display. After you move through the rest of the museum, you end up back at the gift shop and the back side of the cafe. The actual gift shop is packed with a variety of different Bush's Beans factory products, including canned beans and merchandise with their logo on this proud display. So I ask the question again, is this place worth your time? Here's a basic summary of Bushes. Here are the pros. The museum is free, highly informative, and well-designed. It's great to visit when it's raining or you need a break from the weather. And it's family and handicap friendly. The cafe is great reviews. Their food is highly rated. The shop inside is fun and they have a wide variety of products. And there's plenty of free parking, something that most major Smoky Mountain attractions are seriously lacking in. Here are the cons. They don't give a real tour of the factory. It's not really close to any other major Smoky Mountain attractions. They don't have samples of their products and their hours are not the most ideal. 
but one of the most lacking parts is that it's not really a place that kids and many adults would have any real connections or interest in. So though it's family friendly, it's not going to hold people's attention long. Unless you're going for the dining experience, the museum itself is not going to be a real major draw for many people. What would make the Bushes attraction a real amazing experience would be to introduce a more authentic experience like Hershey's Chocolate Factory in Pennsylvania or the Jelly Belly Bean Factory in California. I've been to both and since both are food processing factories, I can safely make comparisons. Though you can't really walk around the actual Hershey's factory, they have a ride that gives you a real visceral experience of the chocolate making experience. And though it was over 15 years ago that I went on the Jelly Belly tour, it left a real impact on me. It let you walk through the actual factory. And both places gave out samples at the end of the tour. Come on, Bushes, don't disappoint us. We want samples. But that's not to say that you should or shouldn't visit the factory, but rather to let you make up your own mind. If you have any thoughts on this museum, their restaurant, or want to add anything about our observations, please feel free to leave them in the comments. As always, we hope you have enjoyed our video. Please help our channel to grow by clicking the like button and subscribing. And stay informed about new video releases by clicking the notification button. Thanks again for watching us at Fairfax.